Next up, we have a uh, senior fellow at HitLab, uh, Greg Bauer, uh, joining us uh, from the, uh, uh, the HitLab uh, headquarters in Connecticut uh, <laughs> from home uh, and, and going to have a, an amazing discussion here uh, around a, um, uh, the, the key components of innovation when we talk about this, uh, this core, uh, again, well covered last week during JPM, um, but uh, making sure that we have a good understanding of the landscape of investing in mental health. And actually, a part of that, we have our book giveaway uh, for this round. Uh, if you could answer this question, uh, uh, we have another uh, question coming up here on, uh, uh, actually on mental health, which is very apropos. Um, but, uh, and if we don't have it queued up, no worry, I'll hand it over to Greg. Greg, the show is yours. Great. Thank you very much, Stan. And Hannah, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm really interested to see what uh, Heal Capital has been doing um, as you connect. Uh, part of, I guess, your thesis is that you see the convergence of healthcare and technology that builds the basis uh, for the next uh, wave of market leaders across the whole uh, spectrum, the full patient journey. Um, and so with that, you all are making investments in a number of areas in digital health. Um, and for, for now, let, in terms of us discussing the, the mental health space, can you first maybe address um, maybe something about the size of the market in terms of what you're seeing with digital health um, in, in mental health? Uh, I should say digital technologies in mental health. Uh, yeah, so first of all, thank you so much for having me today. And I'm happy to share our investment thesis on mental health here with, uh, with, um, with the audience. Um, so basically, first, I want just to uh, address for uh, digital health. So far, there is a prediction that by uh, 20, uh, 2035, uh, digital health uh, revenues or market will be uh, larger or will be above the um, um, the conventional pharma market as such. So we are talking about uh, big changes, big shifts, and we are talking about larger digital health platforms that can accommodate the patient journey end to end. So we are now talking, you see the, the platforms that we see now in our daily life for e-commerce, for example, like the Amazon platform or the Google you know, platform or the Facebook platform, we are seeing platforms with that scale and that magnitude evolving or emerging into the health space or the digital health space and servicing, for example, one population of patient, for example, women in menopause or one um, indication, for example, people with cancer, surfacing their need end to end. And in 10, to 15 years from now, those platforms will have, will be the leading, let's say, healthcare providers or the go-to platforms versus the traditional model today, what we, the fragmented segments, or at least where patients go to a doctor, get medication, um, yeah, prescription drug from a pharma company as such. So that's interesting. So you're saying platforms today can become providers tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, what if as that being the case, what do you see um, are the challenges um, for, let's say, a startup that's affiliated in that one of those platforms? Um, how do they go about commercializing? And wh what do you see there for as, as an investor taking these products to market? How do you see that unfolding for some of these platforms? So we have a bit, one, one example that I can mention from the US, which is a mental health platform that we actually like very much called Cerebro. So maybe some of the audience here members are familiar with it, which is an end, end solution for mental health cases. So what Cerebro has, um, they own the patient journey. So you uh, the patient um, can go to Cerebro and he gets a case manager and he gets a therapist and psychiatrist and they are responsible for, first of all, the assessment, uh, the accurate diagnosis, and then managing which type of therapy and which type, for example, um, psycho drugs that they need to take within the lifetime over the platform. And in, um, let's say, you have a continuous management of the case that you can change the treatment modality or you can change the drug or you can change this based on the one person. 
So Cerebral now is valued over 1 billion. So it's a unicorn in the US, uh, at least has a unicorn valuation. But that's one example of platforms that are evolving, for example, into the mental health space. Uh, you have other platforms, for example, now with diabetes, like taking the people with diabetes too and managing that population, that indication end to end. For example, one of the examples is Livongo. Now with the merger with Teledoc, you see telemedicine platforms, they start as telemedicine, like Teledoc, but that's not enough, right? So the question is, what is next for those telemedicine platforms to actually go deeper into uh, patient outcomes and convert into value-based healthcare, going from fragmentation, having a teleconsultation to adding additional like uh, services or features or platform to become the mega platform. Maybe in a few years from now, Teladoc will become a huge platform yeah. servicing multiple, like multiple indications, or at least at least not, not even the multiple indications, but for one population, I service their need, their demand end to end without losing that patient at some point in the journey and sending them somewhere else to the traditional system. And we know the traditional system has um, I mean, those platforms, what do they solve? They start by solving access today, by saying telemedicine, let everyone who has something, if I had a headache, I can get access at least to a doctor immediately via the telemedicine. But the next step is, is not only to improve the access, this next step is to improve the experience. And then the most important thing is to improve the efficacy. And this is where what I call the next generation healthcare platforms are emerging to solve that problem as such. Yeah. That's great. And really appreciate the the, uh, the interview today and appreciate you coming in last minute. Thank you very much, Hannah. And Greg Bauer, thank you very much for coming in and organizing this. A tremendous, as we know, uh, the JP Morgan conference last week, mental health was, uh, and the mental health uh, interventions digitally were huge. So again, a round of loud uh, virtual applause for Greg and Hannah. Thank you both.